Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Today I am having a cozy reading afternoon, reading this wonderful book, 84 Charing Cross Road. I am reading this book for the Comfort Club, hosted by Miranda Mills and uh, her mother. Uh, they are so nice. I love the Comfort Club. And I started this book for Lawrence Cozy Reading Night uh, last month uh, because I couldn't wait. There's so much to treasure in this book and to think about. It really makes you reflect and feel the, this wonderful, warm feeling uh, because Helen is just, I don't, I don't know, it, she, she hears, she sounds uh, like a very, um, like a good person. <laughs> and with a great humor, sarcastic humor, which also helps in difficult situations. And I love how Frank answers. Uh, I love his, uh, his way of writing, very formal, but also very considerate. I love it. I would like to finish this book today. It is very short. Um, and I am hoping I, I am not going to cry because I spoiled myself. Uh, I think I spoiled myself because I was looking for more information. I was very interested in this book and the story here. And then I found out something that um, is very sad. And so <clears throat> I hope uh, I can um, enjoy this book and I won't, I won't cry. So... And today I am drinking uh, my coffee with milk. Um, so uh, let's start reading. And if you would like to join me, please uh, grab a cup of coffee uh, or tea or something nice to drink. And let's start reading our book. This I find very endearing. For nearly two years, I have been working as a cataloger at Marks & Co. And I would like to thank you very much for my share out in the parcels which you've been sending. That's another, another person that is working in um, the bookshop. And I love this phrase because his aunt is really, really happy about the parcel that Helen Ham sent to her, to, to all the employees. It's certainly good to know that someone so many miles away can be so kind and generous to people they haven't even seen. And I think that everyone in the film feels the same. I love it. <laughs> and also this passage, um, Helen writes after she got a wonderful book from the employees. I wish you hadn't been so over courteous about putting the inscription on a card instead of on the flyleaf. It's the bookseller coming out in you all. You were afraid you'd decrease its value. You would have increased it for the present owner and possibly for the future owner. I love inscriptions on flyleafs and notes in margins. I like the comradely sense of turning pages someone else turned and reading passages someone long gone had called my attention to. I love this. I love these um, thoughts from Helen, um, especially reading passages someone long gone has called my attention to. That's beautiful. <laughs> and now. And why didn't you sign your names? I expect Frank wouldn't let you. He probably doesn't want me writing love letters to anybody but him. So funny. <laughs> I love her humor. So hard one. So Frank says, all I can say is if you ever decide to make the trip to England, there will be a bed for you at 17 Oldfield Court for as long as you care to stay. I love it. You better watch out. 
I am coming over there in fifty in fifty three. It is the year nineteen fifty two. You better watch out. I am coming over there in fifty three. In fifty three, if Ellery is renewed, I am gonna climb up that Victorian book ladder and disturb the dust on the top shelves and everybody's decorum. Or uh, didn't. I ever tell you I write Artie Murders for Ellery Queen on television? All my scripts have artistic backgrounds. Ballet, concert hall, opera, and all the suspects in corps are culture. Maybe I'll do one about the rare book business in your honor. You want to be the murderer or the corpse? <laughs> I love it. It's so funny. That's really, <laughs> that's really uh, a surprise for me. So um, Helen uh, apparently didn't like uh, fiction at all. And here it says, you'll be fascinated to learn from me that hates novels that I finally got round to Jane Austen and went out of my mind over Pride and Prejudice, which I can't bring myself to take back to the library till you find me a copy of my own. Whoa. Uh oh I love it. <laughs> Frankie, you'll die when I tell you. P and P arrived looking exactly as Jane ought to look. Soft leather, slim and impeccable. So Helen has very interesting thoughts about books. She's really a book lover. And I I love to hear her thoughts about books, and her, um, how she buys books, uh, what does she do with her books. And here it says, I house clean my books every spring and throw out those I am never going to read again, like I throw out clothes I'm never going to wear again. It shocks everybody. My friends are peculiar about books. They read all the bestsellers. They get through them as fast as possible. I think they skip a lot. And they never read anything a second time, so they don't remember a word of it a year later. But they are profoundly shocked to see me drop a book in the wastebasket or give it away. The way they look at it, you buy a book, you read it, you put it on the shelf. You never open it again for the rest of your life, but you don't throw it out, not if it has a hard cover on it. Why not? I personally can't think of anything less sacrosanct than a bad book or even a mediocre book. Well, This is very cute and heartwarming. A friend writes to Helen, you might have warned us. We walked into your bookstore and said we were friends of yours and were nearly moved. Your friend wanted to take us home for the weekend. Mr. Mars came out from the back of the store just to shake hands with us, with friends of Miss Hanf. Everybody in the place wanted to whine and dine us. We barely got out alive. It's incredible. Every, every time she she's uh, close to coming to England, something happens. And now it is 1959 and Frank writes to her, we're all sorry to hear that your television show, that your television shows have moved to Hollywood and that one more summer will be, we will bring us every American tourist, but the one we want to see. So sad. 
And this is really interesting that Frank and Nora and Frank and Helen had the same humor. He, Nora writes, uh, Frank's wife writes, at times I don't mind telling you I was very jealous of you. So as Frank so enjoyed your letters and they or somewhere so like his sense of humor. Also, I envied you writing ability. Frank and I were very much so opposites. I miss him so. Life was so interesting. He always explaining and trying to teach me something of books. So we don't we don't have here the letter that um, Helen wrote to Nora, but um, we we hear that um, something that tells you uh, tells us a little bit about how she was feeling, and uh, she's talking to a friend I think, and she says, um, um, it says, uh, Brian to ask me, would you go with us if you had the fair? And I nearly wept. But I don't know, maybe it's just as well I never got there. I dream about it for so many years. I said, I go looking for the England of English literature and a friend nodded and said, it's there. Maybe it is and maybe it isn't. It isn't. Looking around the rack, one thing's for sure, it's here. The blessed man who sold me all my books died a few months ago. It's too sad. But and Mr. Marx, who owned the shop, is dead. But Marx & Co. is still there. If you happen to pass by 84 Charing Cross Road, kiss it for me. I owe it so much. Wow. The last letter uh, in the epilogue is very uh, positive and optimistic and it, uh, it tells us that Frank's family is doing very well and that of course um, Frank was a really good man, a really good father and so they uh, have at least um, these good memories of him and they promise to, to still continue to write to Helen. So at least that, was, that is really good that uh, they have uh, very good lives. <laughs>